Are we at one of those moments in history in which there is uh, the necessity for a new world order? A, because of what's taken place in the Middle East, the rise of, of different kinds of groups, and B, what's happened in Asia, meaning that the, the, there has been a shift from the West to the East. Uh, there's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. Uh, in, just to go back to Iraq for a moment, uh, on the one hand, uh, the manifestations of what is going on in Iraq are depressing and uh, give some occasion for pessimism. On the other hand, simply it's looking at somebody as a student of the future. I find it sort of interesting that there is now going on there are conversations inside Iraq between the various parties, not going very far yet. Secondly, that there is a meeting of ambassadors which will graduate to foreign ministers of all surrounding countries, plus Egypt, plus the members of the Security Council. And that people are talking of broadening yet a third level in which you would bring in India, Pakistan, Indonesia. Now, none of this may succeed this time, but this to me is sort of the outline by which someday in the next few years a solution will emerge. The people will look into that cauldron and decide that they have to learn their limits, not just we, but everybody else. I want to make one point about globalization. It's always discussed in economic terms that everybody is better off, but that it's only partially true. Everybody is better off on the average, but in some countries or in some regions, people lose their jobs, major adjustments have to be made. That's the engine of globalization. The people who are disadvantaged by the process look to their governments for solutions. But the governments are national and the problem is global. So how to bring about a relationship between the desirable process of globalization and its impact on the politics? You're encouraged that China will get better and, and will grow and will be a more responsive no. citizen of the world? I could write a script that this will not happen because the pressures inside China are enormous to deal with so many But it's problems. incumbent on the next president to be able to... I would say to the new president, what I'm saying to the current president, or I've said to previous presidents, the relations with China are the fundamental challenge of American policy. Because if we get that wrong, uh, then much else we may do right is it, it's going to be subsumed in an attention to a conflict like the Cold War. And uh, that, is, uh, uh, that is something that we, uh, we must really avoid. And if we want to have a constructive world, uh, the, uh, the purely strategic and military problems that the shift in uh, power relations with friends uh, will confuse us if we do not consider that we have to bring about together with other countries a different consciousness of what a world order is. Now uh, uh, you have on the one extreme globalization in which uh, the nation is weakened. The other extreme you have religion. Uh, then uh, in between you still have to, uh, traditional states and how you can get an international system in a world that is uh, states and all these other movements that it's bound to produce problems. But I have actually, especially in the last month, uh, developed the thought that yes, we are living in a period of tremendous turmoil now. But I think that at the end of this administration, with all its turmoil, and at the beginning of the next, we might actually witness the 
creation uh, of a new uh, order because people looking in the abyss, uh, even in the, in the uh, abyss, even right in the abyss, even in the Islamic world, uh, have to conclude that at some point all that expectations must return under a different system. But you cannot wake up every morning wondering uh, what horror is going to befall you. And and, and so, uh, yes, we are in a I find it interesting that somebody called a conference of ambassadors in Baghdad of all the surrounding countries, plus the Security Council, and everybody came. And it hasn't broken up. Of course it didn't settle anything yet. And it won't very necessarily quickly. But then they're adjourning to some to a foreign ministers meeting. Now it's just the beginning, a very small step, on a road which either this administration will have to travel further or a new administration. Somewhere along the line something like this must happen.